Good evening, Apostolic Faith, Apostolic Faith Church. I want to be first give Pastor Doremus and Sister Doremus the awesome thanks for letting me be able to come back to the pulpit and be able to preach what's on my heart once again. I want to go back and talk about the lesson that I've taught last time, and that lesson was on forgiveness. But I want to focus on the love that comes with that forgiveness. You cannot forgive somebody if you don't love them. In Ephesians 4.32, it states, Be kind and passionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Love one another. Tonight, I'm going to take a look at a scripture that has become very important to me. These words were spoken by Jesus on the night he was betrayed. There were words of a man who knew that his time was at hand. There was no time to lose. Every word that he uttered, carried extreme weight in these verses god christ gives us a new command which when obeyed will make us the most effective witnesses to the truth that we can possibly be and there is a key in reaching our community and our world for christ and that key is found in this three word commandment of jesus love one another Reading his word and truly following his name will show noticeable actions. Union with Christ is a spiritual reality with the fruit of the spirit, our behaviors, and our way of living. In John 15 verses 12 through 17, Jesus talks about how the disciples should treat one another. And this reads as follows. This is my commandment, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, greater love have no man than this, that a man lie down for his life, his friends. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever, I command you henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth that what his Lord doeth, but I call you my friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, ye but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name. He may give it to you. These things I command you that ye love one another. The truth is there in the Bible. It's right there. In John 13, 34 and 35, Christ says a new command I give you love one another as I loved you. So you must love one another by this. Everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, Jesus laid down a marker for the disciples in that statement. Take note to the three very important milestones here. One, he commanded the disciples to love one another. He commanded them to love one another. These are his disciples. He connected that love to the way he loved them. This was his connection. He wanted them to love each other and he wanted them to love each other the way that he loved them. And he identified that love would be the way that the world would know that they are his disciples. This is how he's putting his word out there. Luke 631 states, do to others as you would have them do to you. Genuine love has a moral, ethical element to it that deals with how we relate to others others and ourselves genuine divine love will hold fast to what God loves and have to what God has which is sin what is not being said here is that the adhering evil is lashing out against sin but lashing it's, it, it, it's lashing out it's lashing out against sin in our own hearts right in here in our hearts it's lashing out this is a call to examine our lives and see if the love of christ actually exists in us and manifesting itself through the hating of our sins and inclination of sinfulness we need to love and we need to obey and we need to be with god if we want to decline that sin christians who, while claiming in Jesus' name 
and salvation over their life prove themselves to be fakes by their love for the wickedness in this world. You cannot claim to be a Christian if you are looking after wicked things in the world. Remember something that when you are a Christian, your menu options change. There's no option to hate. There's no option to go out and party and drink and do the terrible things out there of the world. You need to separate yourself. You are here or you are there. There is no in between. You are for God or you are not for God. This is the love that he has to show. You have to show that love by showing the difference between here and there. There is no in between. God gives us the love to be here with him as Christians. And in order for us to show the world, we have to be there. It is in the area that we are quick to start bringing up excuses. We shouldn't have excuses. Excuses that the Bible does not support in an attempt to justify ourselves. But the truth is clear. You shouldn't be making excuses. Oh, I went over there because of this. I went over there because of that. I went over here because of this. That's not showing general love for God. If you want to show general love for God, then you should be over here being a Christian and nothing less. No in-betweens. The truth may hurt, but the truth will set you free. Genuine love for another will not turn a blind eye to a need of one who is we generally love. You should always be available to help that person. How can you sit there and tell somebody that you love them if you're not willing to help them when they are down? When somebody brings a need to us, we should be quick to pray for them. Your hand should be raised. God should wake you up at night. If you generally love that person, God is going to do these things for you. He's going to show you to love just like he shows you that he loves you. You should show others that you love them. It is the godly way. When somebody brings up a need to us, how many times are those needs brought up to us that we just simply go and pray for? And about them, we get an answer. We need to know that it's the need to pray. John 3, 16 and 18 says, love for one another will meet the needs of another, not the greeds and wants, but the needs. Always know that God loves you and that he is always there for you no matter what. He also wants us to share the loves he gives us with our neighbors and anyone that we can testify to. There is no reason that we should not or cannot. We have every reason. You can do any and everything with Jesus. Not go into where you think about nothing without Jesus. What do you think about when that comes to mind? Maybe you might think, I can't do my work without Jesus. Eh. I can't deal with my anxiety without Jesus. Eh. I can't share my faith without Jesus. You're right. We have to help the world see all of this, that you can't do it without Jesus. And share with them the love we have for him and he has for us. We show this by loving them. This is our way of showing God's love. In 1 Peter 4, 8, it's, it reads, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Our love for Jesus is the result of his first loving us. And because his love for us, we have a great hope to rejoice in. We should be rejoicing. We should be worshiping him. We should be doing everything in our power to let him know that we love him, that we worship him, that we are thankful for him. We are thankful for the gift that he gives us. We are thankful for everything that he does for us. God wakes us up. He gives us pride. He gives us money. It's not all about just pray and love him when he's doing good for us. You need to pray and love him when he's not doing good for you. When you're waiting for a blessing, God does not do things in the time that you ask for it. He does things in the time that he needs to support that. And you need to still love him every single day or you're not proving to the world that God has love for us. There's no need for you to try and justify why this is not happening, why that's not happening. Oh, I stopped praying to God because I asked for something and I didn't receive it. That is not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to love him. You're supposed to support him. You're supposed to worship him when he does good, when he's doing for you, when he's giving you what you ask for and not at the same time. 
if you really have received the hope of Jesus and the forgiveness of your sins, the security of your internal destiny and the preserving and provision of for, for you during the time in between, then rejoice if indeed is real with you. The world says that all hope is lost. It's not lost. Love Jesus and rejoice in the hope that he has given us. Jesus has given us so much hope. You, we we want to pray when we have problems. We want to thank God when things are going well. We want to We want to come to church when we have problems. We only want to step into church when we got something to pray for. But what about the other times? How would you like it if that was something that was going on with you? That somebody only came around when they needed something from you. Somebody only came around when they needed your help with something. And then when they don't need it, they're not around. Is that showing you that they love you? No. But you're going to do the same thing to God. That is not the way that it should be. You should be there doing everything that God asks you to do. Worship him. Praise him. In the good and in the bad. God gives us everything that we need. He provides us with all the needs that we have, yet we don't want to praise him every day. We don't want to worship him every day. We don't want to share the testimony that we have. There's such a great testimony. I could stand up here and I could talk about all the different things that God showed me that he loved me, the sicknesses that I've overcome, the sicknesses that my kids have overcome. There's so many stories out there that God can share about the love that he has for us that we need to remember, that we need to share those testimonies with the world. You don't show that you love the world if you're not sharing those testimonies. Those testimonies are your stories your transcript to what God has done to you. That's your transcript to the world to let them know how much God loves you and how much you love him back when you praise and worship him. No matter who's looking, no matter who's dancing, no matter what, you're showing God what you feel for him. Love him. Understand him. Make sure that you share that testimony with everybody because if you love somebody, you're going to share that testimony. God's love, God's hope, God's rejoice. It all falls together. We want to remember that. In God's name, we want to talk about with everybody how we feel about it. You shouldn't be scared to go to anybody in a restaurant and talk to them. Talk to them about God's gift. You got to that restaurant safely. That's God's hope. That's God's love over you. That's God's protection over you. God put somebody in your path. That person is right there for you to talk to. God put it there. He put that person in your path. We, talk, we, we pray that every week, that God put someone in our path. He loved you enough to do that. God has put many people in the path. But some people don't take that opportunity. Are you sharing God's love by doing that? No, you're not. You need to make sure that you do. Take that love and share it with the world. Don't keep it to yourself. Why would you keep that gift? Why would you keep it to yourself? That's a free gift that God has. His love, the Holy Ghost. A free gift that God shows because he loves us. I always think about my love for God. This hits heavy on my heart because I struggle with that. I struggle with going out there. I'm not scared to admit that now. But it's something that I had to deal with sharing my testimony with people. I share it with a lot of people now. I talk about things that happened to me because I want to talk about these things. I want to tell people that I've been healed of sicknesses because I want them to know the love that I have for God and the love that God has for me. Sicknesses that are not curable. Okay? God took care of it because he loves me, because his heart is big. As I begin to bring it to a close, I want to give you an example of what it is to love your neighbors and enjoy your labors. Here's an example of me showing my love to you. It's like if I go to a store. If I go to a store and I know that they're giving out free groceries and I talk to you and I know that you're going to a store but you're going to a different store and I don't tell you about the store that's giving out free groceries. Now, now why would I not redirect you to go to that store? Am I showing you any type of love by not doing so? But by me telling you about these free gifts is my way of showing you that I love you and care for you. Isn't it a free God gift that God gave us when he declared his love for us? He gave us free gifts. Why not share those free gifts with the people around you? Why not? It's a free gift that God gave for us. It's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. It is a free gift. 
God's love and God's glory is a free gift. The heat, the, the, no fingers crossed, no, no hidden contracts, nothing. God's love. And all he wants you to do is love one another. Love one another. Love your family. Love your neighbors. Love your friends. Love the people around you. Tell them about God. Tell them about everything that's going on. Luke 6, 31. Do to others as you would have them do to you. You want to share this stuff. You want to share this love. You want to love people. You want to be able to talk to them. You want people to love you as you love them. You want people to love you as you love God. And you want people to love God as God loves you and everyone else. But you got to go out there and put it out there. The community is out there looking. And in order for us to love that community, we got to go out there and we got to spread that word. Spread that word strong. Don't stop spreading that word. Spread it to everybody. Tell everybody how much God loves them, how much you love them, how much God loves you. You need to share that testimony. Love everyone. And by loving everyone, you want to share this gift with them. At the end of the day, it's all about loving one another. It's all about the love that God has for us and the love that we have for God. And it's all about us loving each other. So I want to bring it to an end. I have more that I can bring next week, but I want to end this in prayer and just have everybody lay it on their hearts. The love that we will have for each other. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us, Lord, that you may give us the power to spread our love, Lord, the love that we have for each other, Lord. We want to pray that everything gets done, Jesus, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us, Lord. We want to make sure that your love is there, Jesus. Oh, I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord. I want to make sure to hear that your word gets spread, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen.